June Byler was a pioneer with a great sense of humility. She was the kind of a scientist that uh, I think some of the young people should try to aspire to. She was somebody I would introduce really as somebody who was a wonderful mentor, a great scientist, and a wonderful colleague. June mentored me in ways way beyond just teaching me the science. Um, June taught me how to be a scientist. When I first knew June, Sloan Kettering was much smaller than we all knew everybody. She was just a delightful person. To be a senior investigator at Memorial Sloan Kettering at that time was pretty amazing. This was a time when the academic world was dominated by males. I came to her lab after she was already famous in multi-drug resistance, and I learned sort of who she was. It was like, oh yeah, this was the woman who discovered that if you apply one drug, the cancer cell develops resistance to six other drugs. She was at the forefront and really opened up the whole field of using cancer cells to look at different mechanisms of drug action and resistance. People would call up from all over the world and ask, I just read this paper that you published on this cell line, whether it be multi-drug resistance or neuroblastoma, would you send it to me? And she would. She would say, you need to look at your cells every day by just looking at them. Even though they're all sort of similar, they're different. And so this is the kind of attention to detail that she sort of passed on. She questioned everything. She looked at the data very carefully. And her group looked at the data very carefully. I mean, I think by the time we used to bring things to her, they were pretty high quality. She doesn't want to publish an experiment that has been done once. You know, it has to be done twice. Do we have all the right control? So, uh, you know, high level of, uh, you know, ethics. I remember on several occasions having to do additional experiments that she suggested, you know, or having to add in the discussion something about the interpretation, because she thought, okay, it likely is this, but you haven't excluded this other possibility. June was widely known throughout the world's cancer community. I think everybody was delighted that she was finally recognized. She was awarded the Clues Award because of her um, Two, two, actually, two pioneering discoveries. The one was the uh, multi-drug resistance, that is, the ability of cancer cells to mount resistance to multiple drugs. When she described some, uh, some data, um, demonstrated that, that particular gene that is responsible you know, uh, for, for resistance, in fact, in some situation, the cancer cells you know, lost the protein, you know, and then they can recover. And, and then she explained that this is also you know, associated with change in what we call the phenotype. You know, the cancer cells become a little bit different phenotypic using this neuroblastoma cell. And she really said that I do not completely understand you know, what that means, but she emphasized that this could suggest that cancer is not only a disease of the gene, but that it's a disease of the regulation of proteins. And the second was for her seminal work in neuroblastoma, that is being a real promoter of neuroblastoma as a cancer and really defining um, cytogenetically and, with, uh, and biochemically the characteristics of this cancer. One of the best stories I can tell about June, and it really sums up everything June was to me. She said, you're at a cocktail party with a lot of very smart people, very well-educated people, none of them scientists. They've all taken high school biology and they ask you the following five questions. You must answer the question without using any scientific terms that you wouldn't have learned in high school biology. I thought, why is she doing this? I mean, she asked me the scientific questions. Why is she doing this? And when I met with her afterwards, she said, here's why I asked you the question that way. Because it doesn't matter how good a scientist you are in your career, if you cannot explain the science you're doing and why it is important to society, you don't deserve to be in this business. If you want to look back and uh, you want to advise young individuals and you say, you know, pick something and stick to it, you know, and become the very best in it, that's what she was doing. She clearly was a person who had a, a deep passion for what she did. She was somebody who helped you. She was, she was somebody who added. She didn't take things away. She added. Her name will go down as one of the great early pioneers of chemotherapy. We shared reagents. We shared ideas. and. Uh, um, certainly, we miss her as a, a scientist and as a person. Our friendship extended over 50 years. June possessed an acute power of observation. She had the clear vision to see what was essential. 
She viewed her role as one of enabling others, expecting nothing of gain to her. I am fortunate to have experienced the value that being a friend of June's has brought to my life. June and AACR, they were made to be together. The commitment that the AACR has to science was the commitment June Beidler had to science. And that is not just to do great science, but to do great science in teams and to educate the next generation of scientists and to educate the world about how important cancer research is. And that's what June believed and that's what the AACR does.